Now I want to take you to a little science class here. Don't worry, it's not gonna not gonna bore you, and you're not gonna get an F, huh? No, you're gonna get an A because we're gonna talk about the truth about science and atmospheric gases that they don't want you to know in the mainstream media. Specifically, we're talking about well, greenhouse gases and carbon dioxide. And here in the studio, I brought some flashcards. Obviously, you can't see them on the radio, but if you're tuned in on PrisonPlanet.tv, you can see the flashcards. Now we've got elements here on the flashcards, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, and argon, all with their atomic weights with pictures, cool pictures. Isn't that awesome? Now here's the myth. Here's the delusion being pushed by Al Gore. He says that carbon dioxide, which is a combination of uh, one carbon and two oxygen atoms, carbon dioxide, he says, is a pollutant. CO2 is a pollutant. He says, and it's so deadly and so dangerous, it's going to destroy human civilization unless you pay him and his buddies some carbon taxes. So you got to pay him money and then you'll be okay. But let's talk about carbon dioxide and what's really in the atmosphere. It turns out that carbon dioxide has just surpassed a level of 400 parts per million in the in Earth's atmosphere. 400 parts per million. Well, what does that mean, really? Is it high? Is it low? Because Al Gore wants you to think it's alarmingly high. It's terrible. It's, it's atrocious. It's going to kill us. Well, 400 parts per million is 400 out of a million. So 400 parts per million is less than one half of one one thousandth of the air. 400 parts per million is so small, it's so minuscule, it is a trace gas in the air. It, it, it almost doesn't exist at all. And the levels in the past in Earth's history have been as high as 7,000 parts per million. So 400 is very, very small. In fact, right now in this office, it's probably 2,000 parts per million. In many offices or work environments, it can go up to 3,000 or 4,000 parts per million. So 400 parts per million in the atmosphere is ridiculously small. At the same time, when you exhale, you're exhaling carbon dioxide, your breath can exhale as much as 40,000 parts per million carbon dioxide, which adds to the atmosphere. But you're not a polluter just for breathing, are you? That's what Al Gore wants you to think. And a lot of people are confused about this. A lot of people have been brainwashed, and I got to admit, I was one of them. Yeah, five years ago, I was writing about global warming and CO2. I had fallen for the Al Gore argument. Well, I tell you what, I educated myself since then, and I can admit today that I was wrong about that, and that the CO2 myth is a complete hoax. It turns out that oxygen by itself is at a level in the atmosphere of 210,000 parts per million. You got that? So CO2 is only 400 parts per million. Oxygen is at 210,000 parts per million. And over here, nitrogen, you see this? Nitrogen is at 780,000 parts per million of the atmosphere. And then there's a little bit of argon in the atmosphere, and I include hydrogen in here because H2O, hydrogen and oxygen, creates, well, water vapor, and there's a little bit of that in the atmosphere as well. So what you're looking at here on these flashcards is most of what's in the atmosphere. Not everything, but most of it, by far the, the majority. So we're supposed to be concerned about the CO2 being at 400 parts per million? Well, wait a minute. Some new science has just come out that says that as CO2 levels are rising, it's causing more plants to regrow and regreen desert type of areas, arid areas, all across the planet. They're regreening because of rising levels of CO2. Here it is in Science News. There's been a new study that was just published. It looked at CO2 concentrations, and as they're rising, which they are, I'm not saying they aren't going up slowly, they're rising, thank God, because they've been so desperately low for so long that the plants are starving for CO2, okay? So they're finally going up a little bit, and it's helping the forest and it's helping the trees. I got to tell you, if you're an environmentalist, and I am, I'm a legitimate, true, libertarian environmentalist. I love the environment. I love plants. I love aquaponics. I love growing food from seeds. I love forests. I love CO2 because CO2 helps all of those things. CO2 makes forests grow back faster. It, it is the ultimate reforestation nutrient. It is a fertilizer, okay? CO2 is fertilizer from the air that helps 
deserts and arid areas and forests regrow forests and regreen. It's the ultimate nutrient that environmentalists should be supporting. But Al Gore has got these people all twisted up to where they're thinking that CO2 is a poison and that if you're an environmentalist, you have to be against CO2. It's ridiculous. Now, by the way, just to clarify, just to clarify, because I know where people leap on this issue, I am not pro-oil and pro-gas and pro-coal, okay? I'm not pro-fossil fuels. And no, the coal industry didn't pay me to say any of this. In fact, coal is very dirty. Burning fossil fuels is dirty, all right? Now, coal can be made cleaner than it used to be. It's a lot cleaner here in the U.S. than it is in China, for sure. But it's still, it puts sulfur into the air. It puts mercury into the air. Fossil fuels, you know, oil, BP, spills it into the Gulf of Mexico. Crimes against nature. Exxon, crimes against nature. These companies, I do not support them, all right? Just to be clear, just to be on the record, I don't support the fossil fuel energy industry. That's not my thing. But I do support rising CO2 levels as a way to regreen the planet. And this is where we've got to get our heads on straight. CO2 is such a powerful nutrient for growing plants that greenhouse owners actually pump CO2 into the greenhouses to boost production of the food plants there. Did you hear me on that? They pump CO2 into the greenhouses to boost productivity. If you want to grow more food on the planet, you need more CO2. If you want to reforest the areas where forests have been lost, you need more CO2. I'm not saying burn oil and put CO2 into the atmosphere. It turns out that ocean life produces most of the CO2 anyway, and that's enough. The ocean is, is exchanging CO2 with the atmosphere constantly. And just like we exhale CO2, ocean creatures are exhaling CO2 as part of their respiration. So CO2 levels... The higher they go, the greener our planet gets, which is why CO2 is the ultimate nutrient for environmental support of plants and trees and food and gardens. All right? So get it through your heads, folks. I know a lot of people. I mean, I, I did an article on this on Natural News yesterday, and some people were still screaming at me. And they were, well, like one of the comments, this is the dumbest comment ever from a Facebook troll was in my article when I said, let's celebrate rising CO2 levels because it's good for plants, it's good for food, it's good for trees. The, the dumbest comment ever was, stop being so negative. <laughs> yeah, can you believe that? Stop being negative? What do you mean I was being positive? I was celebrating CO2 levels. They're going up, it's good for nature, it's good for plants, it's good for food production, it's good for trees. You know, and it doesn't hurt us. We can actually, you can, your breath has 40,000 parts per million CO2. If you can save another person's life by breathing that into them through mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, they will come back to life. You're breathing oxygen and carbon dioxide into them from you. Carbon dioxide doesn't hurt them, even at that high level for that short a period of time. In fact, OSHA has set an up a limit in a workplace of 5,000 parts per million, more than 10 times the current level of CO2 that's in the atmosphere. You can work in an office environment. You can breathe just fine at 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, even 5,000 parts per million. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. So I just couldn't believe that comment. They stopped being negative. You know, Actually, it's Al Gore's being negative. Al Gore is the doom and gloomer. He's the one that's saying... We're all going to be destroyed. Human civilization is going to end if the CO2 level goes up and the greenhouse gases and the planet's going to fry and you have to pay him money to solve the problem. That's doomsday talk, okay? That's doom and gloom right there from Al Gore. I'm being the optimist. We are the optimists. We're saying CO2 level's going up. That's great. That's great for the plants. It's great for the trees. It's great for food production. We can produce more food, feed more people. We can turn deserts into forests. We can turn arid areas into forests. We can regreen the planet thanks to CO2. So that's the wrap up of that little um, science lesson. Uh, I hope this gets posted on YouTube. I want to see the comments on there to see. It, it really sets apart people who are intelligent, rational thinkers versus those who are just delusional cultists who believe in the Al Gore cult of CO2 being evil. All right, it's it's it's. It's a very clear, it's a litmus test for your IQ, basically. And, and like I said, I admit, I failed that test many years ago, and I was suckered into the, the whole global warming thing. And I, you know, it, 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 takes, it takes a lot to admit you were wrong and change your opinion. But I think 
that is a sign of someone who actually thinks about what they're saying. Sometimes we change our minds. I changed my mind about Adam Kokesh, by the way. You know, at first I was like his march on Washington, which has now been sort of expanded into 50 states. I was like, that's the worst thing ever. I think it's a terrible idea. Then I, I, I rethought, you know, I rethought the thing. And I said, you know, Adam Kokesh, he's got a point. He's got a point. The most dangerous thing is sitting at home doing nothing. You know, so I support, I support activism. I, I don't necessarily support the speech, you know, saying it's going to be an armed overthrow or anything like that. I don't think we need to go there. I agree with Alex on that point. Let's fight the info war first. Let's not whip out the rifles and start, you know, flying lead downrange to, to, to make our point. Let's, let's use words instead. Let's, because we're winning on the words, all right? We're winning on the mathematics. We just talked about mathematics in the atmospheric gases and science. We're winning on the mathematics of economics. Austrian economics is winning, okay? We're winning on so many fronts that we should just keep the info war going. But if we are ever wrong, if we come to the conclusion that maybe there's new information that comes in that, that contradicts our previous opinion, then we got to be man enough to change our opinion and admit yeah, we learned something new. We're, we're changing our, our, our stance on something. We got to be man enough to admit that and then move forward from that point forward. And I'm not saying I'm 100% correct on everything right now. There might be things that I change a few years down the road. But I do know, you know, these are elements from the table of elements. Carbon dioxide is not a pollutant. I know that. I mean, unless you're on a space station or something, and then if you're on a space station, then yeah, CO2 is a pollutant because it's going to build up in the air. You, you got to have scrubbers to you know remove it from the air. CO2 scrubbers is why they have them on spaceships. But on on Earth, we've got enough plants to balance that out, so it's not a pollutant. It is a nutrient. That's the point of all this. All right. So <laughs> enough said on that point. Let's go to the next big news item. Got to get this in before we go to David Icke and Alex Jones in the next hour. Check this out. South Korea joins the Japanese ban on U.S. imports or, or imports of U.S. wheat after the shocking GMO contamination announcement by the USDA. I'm going to cover this very quickly. Here's the deal. The USDA tested crop, uh, commercial crop fields, wheat fields in Oregon, and it found that they were contaminated with Monsanto's genetically engineered wheat which was only used experimentally, planted across 16 states in the United States from 1998 to 2005. This genetically engineered wheat has never been approved by the government for commercial use, and it has never been intentionally grown in any commercial farm. What this means is that the genetically engineered wheat escaped. It escaped the experiment. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it got loose, all right? And it spread to other farms and other fields, and it's now being found in wheat where it's not supposed to be found. Now, Japan got word of this and said, hey, we're canceling our contracts, bud. We're not going to buy that wheat from the United States because it's contaminated with GMOs. And we here in Japan, we don't want to eat GMOs. Well, South Korea just joined in on Friday, said the same thing. We don't want to eat GMOs either. We don't want that Monsanto contaminated wheat. We're not buying wheat from the United States. Why is this a big deal? Think about it. If you're a U.S. wheat farmer, you just got screwed by Monsanto big time because now the wheat prices are going to collapse in the United States through no fault of your own, only through the fault of Monsanto, whose GMOs are contaminating wheat crops, causing prices to go down because it's being rejected by other countries all around the world. Most of the world doesn't want to eat GMO. Most of the people don't want to eat GMO. <laughs> GMOs are rejected by everyone except Monsanto and a few members of Congress who are in Monsanto's pocket and, and the corrupt USDA. And that's it. Everybody else rejects it. So if you're a farmer and you're growing wheat, now you're going to suffer an economic loss because of Monsanto's experiments gone awry. Because of that experimental crop grown in the open air with no protections. They didn't even grow it in a greenhouse. All right? This is open field. Let's see what happens. Let's play genetic roulette to quote Jeffrey Smith's book, with the entire agricultural system. So now we've got, check this out, thanks to the USDA conspiring with Monsanto to legalize these open field experiments, we've now got a situation where we have genetic pollution polluting the fields of America's breadbasket. Now we've got wheat and we've got corn and we've got alfalfa and probably other crops that are contaminated with GMOs. And you can never put that back in the box. 
You can never take that back. So is our wheat crop now ruined permanently where other countries aren't going to import U.S. wheat ever? I'm, hopefully not. Hopefully, hopefully they'll find a way to still buy U.S. wheat. But it could be that bad. It could be that bad. And this is why it's important for all of us to recognize that Monsanto is hurting farmers. Monsanto is destroying the integrity of the United States agricultural system. It is destroying the economic productivity. Monsanto is hurting U.S. exports. Monsanto is hurting the GDP of the United States of America. It's time all of you out there woke up and smelled the coffee on this issue and realized that Monsanto is bad for America. It's bad for farmers. It's bad for your food. It's all around, all around bad news. And now the proof is in the exports. Japan says no. South Korea says no. That's it. You're done. No more, no more wheat being exported. All right, let's move on to U.S. news here. We've got an Oregon man flying American flag upside down to protest the Obama presidency. I'm going to go through a few of these headlines here very quickly while we have time. Hey, guys. Awesome. You upgraded to color printouts. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. The State Department says there's no active Al-Qaeda or Hezbollah terror cells in the Western Hemisphere. Oh, really? What about the ones running the U.S. government? Uh, <laughs> the in Intel chair, this is in the Weekly Standard. In chair of the Intel, uh, the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence says, release the bin Laden documents. The Bradley Manning court martial trial starts today. The trial is dangerous for, civ for civil liberties, say experts. Soldier faces charges of aiding the enemy by downloading and leaking hundreds of thousands of classified documents. He's called a hero to his followers, an enemy of the state to others. It's three years after his arrest. And a man molests and urinates on a woman in the ER, says uh, police. That's out of New York. Yeah, just another sign of the insanity happening in America today. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. Mm -hmm.